verse 2019. Let me tell you, it has been a fine adventure with black metal bands, also some dead metal bands. But you know one, one thing that always strikes me with this kind of festival is the underground mentality, the true spirit that is aflame all the time. So I'm happy to have you, Nagarov. Nice to have you here with us in Finland. How are you doing? I'm happy for you to have me here. You're a happy feller playing black metal. What does that exactly mean to you, playing black metal? Back then or now? Like black metal in general, how is how it is to you nowadays? I need it. We all need it. Benedict needs it. I need it, but we need it our way. We are not a part of what's going on in the scene. The certain hypes and political correctness and mm -hmm. all these new developments and we like the old way. Uh, we need it. That's why we sometimes do these exclusive gigs. And that's about it. You've been in Finland prior to this one, you're not first timers. I saw you back then in, I think it was Black Flames of Blasphemy back then. Yes. And you did deliver a strong gig. But I know some people had not so high expectations because you're a band of controversy. You're not a band that just delivers basic Nordic black metal or basic German black metal. What is your like major response to these kind of uh, naysayers? Depends on my mood. When I have a good mood, I don't care. If I have a bad mood, if it's me. Are you a moody person in general? I get moody when it comes to black metal. Why so? Despite the bullshit I pulled in the beginning of my career, I mean, I mean seriously what I do. I really mean it. You know, it's really important to me. And even before I, I ever picked up a guitar, metal in general was very important to me. I mean, I, I go now towards my 50s and I'm still here. So I'm not one of those twins who kind of discovered black metal for a while. And then you know? just drop out. And then, and then yeah, it just vanish. So I really need it. And even though black metal doesn't provide for me anymore what I'm looking for in black metal, it is, it's a very sensitive subject because I met friends, I lost friends. My life is kind of determined by black metal. So my ups and downs completely. You mentioned these bullshit things that you mentioned earlier in the career. There's been a lot of debate about like when Nargara was originally founded and all about these different facts or let's say opinions that what it was happening. So let's get it once and set clear for it. When was Nargara uh, founded and why? 1996. 1996. Why that year in particular? Um, in 95, my best friend hung himself and we had a band called ex and uh, we did together and that was more like a raw death metal style and um, I just continued the band and I became the sole mind behind it and Sharon was still there though I don't want to kind of completely knock him out but um, I became very egocentric and very mad I think I had to process the death of my friend and I became very unpleasant with my surrounding and, and it became Narroth was my ship to express what happened with all the good and with all the vote. Why do you think, because not only you have mentioned that dead metal was kind of a gate to black metal, why do you think you and so many other bands go through death metal in order to have a black metal band? <clears throat> So when I grew up in the GDR, you know, the eastern part of Germany. The kind of a shitty part nowadays, see this. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean it's... Still, still my old country, right? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. So, I don't mean to offend, but no, they no, say no. that it was like a, seen as a kind of a part of country that kind of hurt more. Yeah, so, and we did a lot of tape trading, and in the beginning, death metal ruled the scene, and by the way, and I agree with many old people, I'm really happy that more and more of these, these older people in the scene agree upon it. Everything was rather called death metal. It didn't really call it black metal. Everything was just called death metal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were listening to death metal. And black metal and death metal was there at the same time and it was no problem. But then with time, death metal and black metal kind of split ways. Exactly. And many of us, including my fucking self, 
deny it might definitely pass and try to uh, try to, to cover it up. What is why I never said in the beginning that Norway was founded in 96, but in, in 89 and 91, because Occultus, which was the first band in You're 89. like a predecessor. It was, it was always my thing, and, and, and uh, with my, my, my friend who hung himself, he was, we were kind of equal in it, but we had Occultus first, and then Exuminense, but it was always our thing. And it, you know, it's, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to just draw the line between these different bands because it's always your soul that is creating the music, right? Mm -hmm. It was, it was. We were actually, today we had a debate with my friend that like how trash man, dead man, and black man was more or less the same if we go oh, far, yeah. enough, ba far enough back in the 80s. So it was kind of differ different and, and harder to try to kind of align between black metal. I mean, even early bands of Slayer didn't actually get defined as trash metal yeah. until they kind of like created the way. So did these different bands, especially now that mention GDR, did these different bands even sound like different to you or, or was it just all the same, extreme metal? It was rather just extreme metal. I mean, there was a difference between trash metal and heavy metal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it was it was just metal. We were just metal heads, you know. Yeah. We met together, and all this diversion happened then in the nineties. It started all in the nineties. I mean, just remember, what was it? Was it there this kind of attack on the tour bus on Paradise Lost? Huh? For me, that kind of it started when kind of death metal. Split. But we, we also have to accept, I mean, I always loved old obituary, yeah. obituary. Yeah. and I remember I wanted to see him live and it was in somewhere in the middle of the 90s and he came on stage in jogging pants, I was just smoking and enjoying it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was the death metal of the time, having the sporty pants, smoking and weed, and it was totally different from that. I the black totally metal. disagreed with this yeah. new kind of wave of, of death metal. I mean, even Cannibal Corpse, I still like the first three albums of Cannibal Corpse, and then Chris Barnes kind of threw his dreadlocks and all he did was just smoking pot, you know? And we had this, you could buy them cut, they were called jams. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, this this cut jogging pants, they were called jams. And I went ran around in these. And That's a smoking weed. And smoking weed. And I never heard a wise word out of a pothead's mouth. You know? yeah. So, was the, you know, I, I remember that your name was from of Mayhem, rest in peace and all that stuff. But I mean, there was this debate, like like he was saying, like you shouldn't do this and you should die, and you should be a, not be, you know, like, you know, under too much influence of drugs and all this stuff. Did this stuff influence you as well, or were you just a happy life-minded person? Happy life, my ass. No, no, no. I just don't like to lose control. That's why I don't think drugs. What about alcohol? Don't, don't you see any contradiction between you know getting drunk or getting it is maybe five times a year I have a freaking bottle and it's just because it's cool on camera, <laughs> you know? It's even stupid that I have fucking glasses on because it's so dark. I don't even need glasses, so don't exaggerate this bullshit. I barely drink. And if you want to drink, drink. If you want to take first, you just take it on. It's just, okay. it's just on me. So you just don't care about it. Uh, there was this talk, I think, uh, part of an interview where it was mentioned that you uh, kind of endorse healthy lifestyle and bring that, you know, to the black metal culture, you know, like, I don't know, being a kind of a healthier person of yourself. How much can you relate to that interview or rumor nowadays? It was right. We had the GBMC, which was kind of an organization mm -hmm. that kind of was supposed to, not just to promote, but to live to certain codes. But yeah, kind of not drinking too much was a part of it. And uh, there was a no drugs policy in it. You know what I mean? But it was not like a straight edge thing. It was more like what, what we wanted to stand for, what kind of man we want to be. And yeah, of course, exercising this way or all this so-called toxic masculinity we're talking about, you know, that was really important to me that we have still men. But um, as always, you can have great ideas, but it fails over the human nature. So it fails over the reality. This business called the Operation Werewolf in the United States, which has I know. Been, yeah, you're probably familiar with it. And as you know, I'm just talking in the terms of you know, the audience as well, that they are all about this kind of a healthy way of seeing masculinity, you know, being exercising, 
doing healthy stuff, doing kind of manly stuff, yeah. and also staying away, staying away too much of being under influence. How do you react to that? Is it just a cheap ideology or is it just a waste of time? Or is it something in between, maybe? I think as a man, you should strive forward to this. You should strive to become a better man and kind of <clears throat> inherit. It's always heavy to say kind of older values because values change so much over the last centuries. But in these nowadays times where we have the degeneration of our society, I think it's very important that we have men like that. It's been said that we are still like physically, like in a caveman age, but our minds have kind of evolved into this kind of new kind of age where technology is part of our lives and we should just abandon these kind of beliefs which are all about, you know, like, pick the right roots, pick the right berries, kill a deer, eat its meat, and, you know, build a better cave or house. Do you think this is true or is it just one way to just give an excuse for our way of life? I didn't think that true would give you a profound answer. So what do you get out of black metal these days if you just get more along into the world of metal? I mean, you're not a young guy, like much like me, we're all 40 plus, and we have seen the phases of, different phases of metal, we've seen the trends come and go. What does black metal offer to you nowadays? Nothing. So why are you, why are you keeping the torch flame? Do you know sometimes when you watch these old movies and they always show this old grumpy grandpa that kind of hates everything new? Like the married with children. All right, let's go with that. Uh, that's me. I'm the, the constant, I'm the guy that constantly dislike everything new. And are you against technological advances and evolution or are you just getting grumpy? I don't know. It's uh, I like what I grew up with. You know what I mean? And this is what I hope to see when I grow old. And it actually, I, I have troubles to kind of kind of deal with the reality of our nowadays times, including black metal. So I even avoid these old tapes and old LPs to listen to because it really creates kind of like, not depression, I don't want to go that far, but it just makes me angry when I see what happened to black metal. I can't I can tolerate it, but it's rather, I just ignore it. I just listen to other stuff. Whenever it comes to black metal, I get, Okay, let's, let's put it in a simple, kind of annoying way of a question. Version or Scorpions? If you have to choose what you listen to. ACDC. <laughs> ACDC, let's go away. So, now let's get a little bit into your recorded albums. You have made very, like, music class, very talented riffs and songs, but with very controversial tracks like When Person Killed Man. How do you react to such a provocative names and titles after all these years? I mean, it's not like you are singing about Satan be dead or burning the flame of infernos or let the lands of Jews be bombarded or anything like the kind of cliche things, but you just went into the meat of metal level of black metal. Why? Looks like truth doesn't sell, right? I mean, how, how can it be controversial to sing about something that happened? And it's a part of our our like metal history. This is exactly what happened the last eight years that all these new people, all these new authors that write books about, about black metal, they weren't even there in that time. And we start, and they start to rewrite the history of black metal by denying what actually happened back then, or kind of change things. And all these bands from back then that are still big, they try to hide their, their BS they did back then. It was a part of it. I didn't think it was BS, but nowadays it's kind of not really correct anymore. It could cause you some cancellations of gigs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I hate this gig. No everybody that. So what I was saying is that, um, you know, like, a, like we were talking about those tracks like when, you know, Burson killed man, and he was saying that uh, these truths you were like showing and people were all of a sudden like, oh, don't tell us about that because we want to see the other side of truth right? so how do, how do you cope with that nowadays i ignore it i freaking ignore it this is all i can do so 
I have somebody who manages my Facebook stuff, most of, most of the things, because I have to ignore it. I just don't want to deal with what's going on in the world. Not only it, like metal. But I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't see anything controversial in that song. As I'm not taking any sides, for me, it's just a description. It's just like a tale, you know, something that happened. And when you were there back in the day, I mean, I still have... Do you, do you know, back in the day, this, this little magazines that were kind of black and white copied and kind of stapled yeah, together? Yeah, like the Xerox ones? Yeah, I, I, I still have these old magazines, and let's see what my body is doing. You cool? Let's just lay down, man. Cool. And he's back on the interview once again. Hey, it's just okay, he wants to be a part of it. And yeah, I, it's I, cool. Anyway, and I remember, I forgot with whom that interview was, but it, it was made by... by by somebody from, can't say. Anyway, it wasn't in furnace, Mac. And he was asked, is that, and he asked, hey man, do you actually believe what is rumored that actually the front man from Borsum killed him? And the guy answered, no, I don't believe it. You know, back in the day, we didn't have this internet, you know, where it spread in the speed of life, the information spread in the speed of life. So we, we couldn't even actually believe when we heard it the first time, you know? Exactly. It was just like a rumor, and then it suddenly broke through, and. And a guy from the Titanic Brotherhood, which was in East Germany, kind of a serious thing, he got a videotape from the news, from Norwegian TV. Yeah. And I used some of it as the intro of the song. I, I, I couldn't believe it. In the beginning, I thought it was a, it's a stunt or something like that. You know what I mean? It was kind of crazy time of, you know, for this called the so-called second wave of black metal. And suddenly, not only the churches were burned, but suddenly these murders, Came and you know suddenly inside murders happened or murder happened, so it was kind of an unbelievable age. Do you think we will ever reach that kind of a thing? For ah, that ship has sailed. That ship has completely sailed. And in the end, it was just it is it's just a story what just happened to us, and it divided the scene back then. It suddenly was man or Borsum fans. And if you had the wrong shirt or the wrong club. You make your ass look, man. I, I remember going to a Inferno festival back in, I think, 2005, and I was asking Norwegian people in Oslo, like, if you get to choose which camp would you choose, like, version and Mayhem, and I was kind of surprised that there was no such, much, that much empathy towards Mayhem. But more on the version side, and for a personal opinion, whatever it means, I'm more of a version guy, I mean, like, Mayhem, Created wonderful with the Mr. East. But then again, Persian did so much more with their album or his albums. So I think it's kind of understandable, but still people see this world divided. But nowadays, things have changed with, you know, wickedness having its own YouTube channel and delivering with these bits of information. And they know you're going to say, like, hey, I have my own YouTube channel to, you know, kind of a challenge these things. So things have uh, changed a lot. Do you watch speakerness things or do you even care? I have maybe seen bits of two of his videos, um, but I don't care. I don't watch it. I don't really care. And I really think to kind of piggyback on what you said, you know, what, what did version contribute to this scene and what did man contribute? I don't think we can even compare this band because it's a total different universe. Mayhem kind of is a total different different approach to black metal than Burzum. And what Mark Vickerner is doing, it's more like a life. And what's going on with you? Well, you still know how to answer his phone. That's actually... I don't know how to buy your time. It is, it is, Burzum is more life philosophy for me, you know? It's a, it's a way to, to view the world. And, and, and you choose if you follow or not, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this this whole idea, who is more true or whatever, I abandoned that ship a long time ago. I remember as a, I had some connections to the Titanic brother in, in East Germany in, in 97 or, was it 97 or 98? I can't remember exact, so I don't want to talk about it. I got the, one of the few copies of the rehearsal of Mayhem in the Woods, not not something on YouTube. We didn't have it, and I got this this this, this videotape from Mayhem's rehearsal in the woods, and I have seen, I have 
I have seen how, how dad acted there, more like a funny guy. Yeah, and it wasn't that serious. No, it was place. not that serious, the serious person that people try to make people look like. Yeah, thank you. You know what I mean? And I, I, I just saw a guy that probably struggled with himself, but still kind of was just a young guy, you know, when, when teenagers Wanted are young, twins. music and shows. Yes, especially all these covers from, from Freezing Moon, when he was in kind of, you know, just when it's cold, when it's dark. But the way he said it, when it's cold, when it's dark, he kind of made fun of it. In the beginning, it was, a, it, it was strange to me, you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing here. But then it just dawned to me that they're just guys and we are. And I, I am 100% fucking sure, if we would have had internet the way we have right now, None of these heroes of the early 90s would have that cool status. Because we would all have known about their profanity in life. Would it be even possible? I've been thinking now that you said that, all the information. Would it be even possible that this guy like, did? He could even be alive because nowadays people would be more like supporting for, you know, black people like, hey, you are our hero, you're creating this new genre of music, which is still relatively new. I mean, after Battery, Hellhammer, Venom, whatever. And, and people are like more like, hey, I want to buy your shirts, I want to buy your CDs, LPs, I want to see your shows. Could it be imagined that this guy would have like, okay, fuck, fuck that shit, I'm not going to kill myself because there's a huge audience which are supporting me rather than making my life more depressing. Do you think a black male would have gone totally other ways if it was for the kind of viral audience? I don't think so, but it's just speculation. I think dad was not supposed to live. So it was like destined, you know, like a written in stars that you need to die so that your band can't kind of not flourish. It's just too brutal to say. I don't know if I would go that far because I'm not that spiritual. You know what I mean? I'm talking about spirituality, before we, you know, go, go to the end and very much, uh, how are you in, in person? How are your relations to religions, to death, and all that stuff? Because black metal is very divided, as you know, about like what happens in the afterlife. Is there like great Satan or God or heaven and hell? Or is it just fucking emptiness or just nothing? What is your view of what happens when we die? I believe not. Are you nihilist? <laughs> Don't use these big words on me. People like to use it because it sounds cool, you know what I mean? I'm not using it because... No, not you, but there are people I'm a nihilist. Oh, I, hey, I don't read Nietzsche, so why the fuck you even read Nietzsche because it sounds cool or what? Get the fuck out of my But then again, things. but is it like a trendy thing to kind of, uh, you know, disrespect these old philosophers? No, when people are quoting like Nietzsche and uh, other philosophers like those of uh, Schopenhauer or Sartre for their kind of, uh, you know, uh, negative thoughts or pessimistic thoughts. Nowadays, people are going, "No, you're such an ex-lord because you quote Nietzsche." Why we could actually see them as a way of describing how an atheist person could see life? Where do you stand? Are you a spiritual or atheist or secular person? Or I have to sentence in mind, but I, I, I don't think it, it hits what I wanted to say, but I grew up on a farm, you know yep. what I mean? Yep. And so like real farm life. Yeah. I learned how to hunt, I learned how to butcher. In nowadays terms, I'm not really an educated man. I don't read. But you're a humble man. Sometimes I am, but when it comes to black metal, I'm very arrogant, so we skip that. Um, as I said, in nowadays terms, many people might think I'm not, I'm not really an educated or a big reader. I don't read. I don't read books. I don't read all these philosophers or whatever because I actually don't care about these things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I care about what I have to do right now. And I experience life and I try to express it. And for some people, it sounds like poetry, and for others, it's just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And life teaches me lessons, and sometimes I ignore them, and sometimes I obey what they teach me, but it doesn't make me to an actually intelligent philosopher. 
but it makes you an artist that was. Like, I want to be an artist. Do you rather see yourself just a, I'm a guy who wrote, writes some music and all, that's, the, that's all that there is to you. Or how would you define yourself? Back in the day, I thought I'm a songwriter. Back in the day, man, it sounds so weird. But um, I thought I'm a songwriter. But in the end, Nara became an instrument to cope with what happened to me, to give words or give sound to something I didn't find words to. Because when, and, and I had some, some, some struggles in my life, and I don't take drugs, I don't take pills, I live through it. And then whatever with Nara I release, is actually the result of what happened to me. You know what I mean? So you have a very intelligent answer. But, All right, buddy. But do you have dreams that you're still after? I have my wife. We're going to have our own family. We're going to live in the woods. We're going to have my farm. That's all I want. This is an excellent excuse for us to put an end to this very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you uh, a lot for your time and your right. interesting answers. So Nargiro is not your everyday black metal band. It's definitely not your typical Nordic black metal band. It's German black metal with a with the soul coming from the countryside and all about becoming clear with your past. Don't you have a word into the end? A wisdom or just some closing words? Ah, you're catching me off guard. We caught him off guard. Thank you for being with us in Stillfest 2019. Take care of yourself and don't do stupid shit.